everybody, it's Kate Baldwin here from Valero and today I'm going to be debunking three of the most common myths that I hear around strength training for endurance athletes. So myth number one, strength training will make me bulky, big and slow. This is one of the most common concerns that I hear about incorporating strength training in runners, triathletes, swimmers, and cyclist programs from both coaches and athletes. However, this is in fact wrong. So performance improvements from strength training seen in endurance athletes primarily occur without changes to overall body mass. So how is this so? Well, current research proposes that the completion of concurrent strength and endurance training may actually negatively affect cellular pathways and in turn actually inhibit muscle hypertrophy. This means that the endurance training can actually inhibit bulking up. So research generally suggests that the positive adaptations from strength training that endurance athletes experience actually stem from neural changes rather than muscular hypertrophy. So these neural adaptations can positively influence your muscular power and make you faster, not slower. In fact, some of these adaptations have only been seen in response to strength training, not endurance training alone. So this further supports the use of strength training to improve performance and not slow you down. It is also important to keep in mind that bulking up by increasing muscle size is actually really hard and it requires a large caloric surplus and a long period of time. It is, however, important to note that there have been a couple of studies examining strength training in endurance athletes, which have, however, shown an increase in muscle cross-sectional area, meaning an increase in muscle size. However, it's also really important to identify that this occurred without an overall change in body mass. So there was no change in the athlete's body mass by the end of their strength training. So this means that the athletes increase their lean muscle mass and maybe in turn also potentially decrease the body fat from their strength training. Now that's a win. Okay, myth number two is that strength endurance sessions count as strength training. This is another common myth that I hear, particularly from some coaches, and it's that endurance athletes do not need to strength train if they already complete strength endurance sessions or strength work during their endurance sessions. Some examples of these sessions can be doing hill repeats if you're a runner or big gear work if you're a cyclist or a triathlete or swimming with paddles if you're a swimmer or a triathlete. It's crucial to recognize that during these strength endurance sessions, an athlete would complete hundreds or even thousands of repetitions of each of these movements. So for example, if a runner runs up a hill at a cadence of 170 steps a minute for let's say two minutes, they will complete 340 repetitions and may even then complete this multiple times in a session. So these strength parameters do not conform with more traditional strength training prescription and therefore do not encompass strength training, despite the implementation of these sessions with the goal of improving strength. Therefore, technically, these strength endurance sessions are still classified as endurance training rather than strength training sessions. These sessions do not induce the same physiological adaptations from training as a traditional strength training session. A proper structured strength training session, say in a gym, will develop an athlete's maximal strength, their muscular tenderness stiffness, and it will induce specific neural adaptations amongst other things. For the athletes to experience these adaptations, they need certain levels of mechanical loading to create these improvements and in turn then improve their endurance athletic performance. Strength endurance sessions such as hill work simply do not provide enough of a mechanical load for these adaptations to occur. So for example, a study examining the additional completion of a 90 minute low cadence session. So this was at 40 RPM at heart rates between 70 to 80% of heart rate max, which was completed twice a week for 12 weeks in male cyclists, did not increase either aerobic capacity, cycling performance, or leg strength of the participants. In contrast, however, the control group who completed the same session, but at a freely chosen cadence, improved both their aerobic capacity and their cycling performance. Now, I'm not saying that these sessions don't have their place. They can be great for doing things such as increasing testosterone, developing VO2 max and other performance perspectives. However, it is just important to acknowledge that strength training traditionally performed in a gym and strength endurance sessions work in varying ways to improve an athlete's performance. 
Both can be included in a well-rounded endurance athletes program for optimal performance improvements. Now the third and final strength training myth that I hear often is that endurance athletes should complete high repetition and low load strength training work. Now I understand that logically this could make sense. As endurance athletes, we're always getting our heart rate up and we're working hard during sessions. So you may naturally think that the high rep work in the gym, so let's say 15 to 20 repetitions, would be ideal to replicate the demands of your sport. However, this is incorrect. This may initially sound contrary to popular belief about what type of strength training is optimal for improving endurance performance, but research has consistently shown the effectiveness of maximal strength training to significantly improve running economy, velocity at VO2 max, and other performance measures. Research has also consistently found that maximal strength training programs have shown greater improvements in running economy, cycling economy, and swim performance when compared to programs where exercises were completed with high repetitions and lower loads. So this again touches on the point that I made before, where for physiological adaptations to occur from strength training, a certain mechanical load, or you can think of it even as a threshold, has to be met for the body to be adequately challenged and therefore adapt accordingly. So when it comes to thinking about the loads of your strength training, rather than thinking of the strength training program as being endurance specific, it's more important to consider the actual physiological changes that will occur from the exercises and to progressively work towards heavier loads and lower sets and repetitions. So to summarize, strength training will not make you big, bulky or slow. In fact, it can do the opposite. Strength endurance sessions such as running up a hill or big gear work do not count as strength training and strength training programs should not be high rep and low load, rather they should be the opposite. In fact, if you would like to know exactly what kinds of sets, repetitions and loads you should be completing in your strength program, make sure you click on this video. If you are keen to include strength training in your endurance training program, make sure you check out our app for Larry, where we have specifically created numerous strength training programs for runners, triathletes, and endurance athletes to help improve performance and help minimize risk of injuries. If you have any questions, make sure that you pop them in the comments below and I'll see you next time.